Hello, welcome back to my channel, Charlie's Lessons, and in this video, we're taking a look at three tools you can use to build interactive video lessons for your students. Once upon a time, teachers used to wheel in a big TV with a video cassette player underneath, pop in a VHS video, and say to the students, watch this video. And the students they would watch the video, but there would be no activity. The students would not be active during the video. Now, with the advent of the internet and all these new tools at our disposal, we can build interactive videos for our students and make the most of the video content that we have available. So let's get started with tool number one, which is Edpuzzle. As you can see, very important, we have a basic plan which is free. However, the restrictions are that you can only use up to 20 video lessons. But I'm gonna show you that you can still use all the content on Edpuzzle for your classroom, bypassing this limit. So once you've made an account on Edpuzzle, we go to the top left-hand side and we've got Discover, which is where it's gonna show you all the content available to you. So the way this works is very simple. Let's imagine I'm searching for a video on animals. I put the search term at the top and I'm looking for one that has a, a duration suitable for my class and also a number of questions also I think are suitable. Let's look at this one on the right hand side which is two minutes long, just over two minutes and has nine questions. And so immediately we can see here at the bottom here we can see where all the questions appear in the video. So what's gonna happen is when you press play, as soon as the video gets to that point, a question will appear. So on the right hand side, we can see we have a reference from the video and also three different options. I'm gonna choose the first one, go to submit, and you see at the top that the multiple choice question we just answered was correct. So the way this would work in class is that you choose a video that you would like to watch with your students and you as a teacher would lead the activity so you would have this presented in front of the students and you would go through each question stopping and asking the students to tell you what the correct answer is for each question. If you would like to share this video with your colleagues or with a group of students we're just going to go to share preview. Now when the students or the teacher answers the questions in this preview, they're not gonna be saved, just like the way we did now. I just go to share preview and copy this link and send it. We're not gonna be taking a look at how we can upload your own videos and edit them because really, you know, us as teachers, we just don't have time to do things like this. And when there's so much content readily available, there's no need. The second tool I'd like to talk about is Nearpod. Now I did make a full tutorial on how to use this platform, which is linked just above. However, in this video, we're just looking at how we can create video lessons or use the video lessons that are already available. So the first thing we need to look at, obviously, is the pricing. So you can see here that there is a plan that is free for educators. Once we've logged in and we go to Nearpod Library on the left-hand side, we're gonna to go to Content Types and we're gonna to go to Videos. And all we need to do here is write a search term that we'd like uh, the video to be about. So I'm gonna try animals again. We're gonna choose this one, which is called Weird Animals in the World. I'm going to go to preview. So let's say that I'd like to use this video. I'm gonna go to teach, and I have two options. I can either have the teacher control the pace of the quiz or the video, or I can have my students log in via Nearpod on their devices on their mobile phones or tablets. I'm gonna choose the most typical form, which is live participation, which is doing it in front of the class. And I'm gonna just say, teacher plays, and I can toggle this on and off. If I don't want the questions to appear in a video, I just turn this off. And let's go to see what an example of a question is. So, what do you already know about weird animals in the world? So this, as you can see at the top, is an open-ended question, and this will be good for students to start discussing what they think the answer to this question is. If we go to the second question, we can see that we have a true or false question. Now again, if, if students were answering these questions on their own devices, this chart or this graph would reflect what answers the students chose. In this example, as you know, it was the teachers playing. So we're just gonna ask the group in front of the screen, we're gonna ask them to give their answers verbally 
to you. So either raising their hands or you selecting students. So the content that's readily available is only on Nearpod itself. If you did want to use YouTube, you would have to create your own lesson. And to do this, you would just go to create lesson, create a lesson from scratch, go to add content and scroll down to video. Go to add on the right. And again, we can choose from the Nearpod library, but then if we go to the top and click on YouTube, then we can start to search for videos from YouTube. Now, if we do use videos from YouTube, we would have to create our own quiz. So I've just chosen a video, I've gone to save in the bottom right-hand corner, and I'm gonna have to add the activities myself. So I can either trim the video using this and making it longer or shorter. And I can jump to sections of the video to add questions. Now, I've only ever got two options, either open-ended or multiple choice. And these will also only be the options when you're using a ready-made video lesson. Tool number three is ISL Collective. Now, you may be familiar with this website, especially if you are an English teacher, because it has worksheets for the classroom. But an overlooked part of this website are the ESL video lessons. So let's go take a look. Once we're at the website, we've got three options, worksheets, PowerPoints, or video lessons. So we go to video lessons, and again, with the other tools, we can search for videos that we'd like to use. So I'm gonna to go to animals, let's go to the most popular, and choose the first one. These are the two options that I use the most. So the interactive mode is that you are going to answer the questions using the quiz inside the video, or you are going to use a non-interactive mode, which is actually the one I'd like to share with you today. So if we go to non-interactive mode, what's gonna happen is our students are gonna get presented with the question, but everybody's gonna get presented with the question. So the video's gonna be playing in front of your students and the questions will appear on the screen for the whole class. So here I am on one of the questions in the video, and you can see here in this non-interactive mode, it's not gonna let me choose the answer, which would, would be the case with the interactive mode. And so what I'm gonna do is, imagine you're in your class, you would then ask the students, what animal is it? And your students would give you the answer. Once your students are giving you the answer, then you can check the right answer by clicking on this blue arrow here. And hopefully your students said elephant. The way I use this in class is that if you scroll down, you actually get the video quiz questions in a printable format. Now, in this website, I don't usually print directly from here. What I would do is I would copy all of this onto a separate document. So I'd right click and go to copy. And I would copy this onto maybe a Google Doc or even onto a Canva worksheet. If you'd like to learn more about Canva worksheets, then go check out my other video, which is linked just above on how you can use this in your classroom. Thank you for watching this video on three tools that you can use to make videos interactive for you and your students. And I'm sure your students really will enjoy using these in your classroom. I'll see you in the next video.